My Garden Over Gaza by Sara Musa The drones buzz over our apartment building and I catch my breath. I saw them. They will see you. I pull my little brother away from the window. He's too young to understand that even the drones are dangerous. Shall I tell you about Baba? I saw him nods, climbs down, and sits quietly beside me. When Baba was a young man, he owned a big farm near Omnan Nasev, I say in a loud voice. He planted zucchini, potatoes, and cantaloupes. The land was fertile, and Baba worked hard. Where is his farm now? Esam asks. When the occupiers built the wall, it trapped us in the Gaza Strip so we could never get out. Baba's farm is behind the wall, and Baba couldn't go back. But Baba kept planting wherever he could. He's the one who started a garden on our roof and taught me how to care for it. Can you teach me? Isam asks. I can't hear the drones anymore. Today I'll teach you to pick green beans, I say. My awa'i salah flutters in the wind and I can smell wet soil and mint in the air. I close my eyes and try to imagine Baba's farm, where the plants are in rows as far as I can see. I imagine soft earth beneath my feet instead of this hard concrete. I show Assam how to pick beans and make sure he doesn't tear the plant. The plant is heavy with fruit and we quickly fill our bucket. I make green bean stew and carry a plate of it downstairs to Mama's sewing shop. She looks up from a dress she's trimming. It would be better with a little meat, I say. I'll try to pick some up before Friday, Mama says. But I know if Mama doesn't have good business during the week, we won't have meat on Friday either. After I saw him goes to bed, I get Mama all to myself. You seem quiet today, Mama says suddenly. I'm just thinking. I'm tired of the drones. I'm tired of us working so hard, but having hardly enough. But I won't tell her my worries. I know she's tired too. You remind me of your Baba. Mama looks into my eyes, always thinking. The next morning, Mama heads down to open up her shop. I get Assam dressed and make him breakfast. Let's go water our garden, I say, and Assam runs ahead of me up the stairwell. Suddenly, I hear the buzzing of the drones. I pull Assam away from the door of the roof. I take him down to our floor and wait inside. I put a cartoon on for him and watch through the window, anxiously waiting for them to leave. I see a drone turn back over our roof. It's spraying something. Don't follow me, I yell at Assam and slam the door behind me. I run up and swing the roof door open. The air feels thick and smells of chemicals. I grab a plastic sheet from the bin and throw it over my plants, but they are already wet with the spray. The drone turns back and starts spraying again. I grab a shovel and charge through the mist, swinging at the drone. It flies further away, but keeps spraying. I gag and cover my face with the cloth of my awai salah. Stop, Mama yells. She grabs my waist and drags me into the stairwell. I try to pull back, but suddenly I'm so tired. I gasp the cleaner air in the stairwell and moan aloud, tears suddenly pouring out. Mama, I cry, it's all gone. You can plant it again, she says, but if we lose you, who will plant again? I scrub my skin in the shower to wash off the herbicides, but on the inside, I'm still burning. Mama closes the shop for the day. We wait for the wind to clear the air on the roof, and then we put on our boots and thick jeans to go upstairs. My plants are already wilting. The green tomatoes weigh down the drooping plants. They will never ripen. We'll plant again, Mama says. But what's the point, I say, swallowing my tears. You will plant again, she says firmly, just like Baba did. We clean out all the dead plants in broken pots and put them in garbage bags. Then we scrub and rinse down the walls and tiles. The next day, Mama comes home earlier than usual. Nura, I brought you a present, she says. She has four grape vines lined up at the door, and she places some seed packets in my palms. As I fill pots with sweet soil and pat in the new plants, I imagine Baba sitting beside me, patting in the plants too. Baba always sang as he worked. I sing Baba's favorite song, a song of freedom. They think we will give up, he had said to me once, but we never will. No matter what happens, I know I'll never stop planting. Someday I will go back to Baba's farm. Someday I will return.